What's up guys, we're back at it for this Friday NCAA basketball slate for March 15th. We didn't do that great yesterday. We went three and three overall. We cashed our biggest bet of the day. Our second biggest bet though did not come through for us. Nevada really kind of uh, crapped the bed. They did not come through. They somehow lost 85 to 78. Not really sure how that one went so poorly for us, but got to take our losses just like we can take our wins. The day before was a huge winning day. Today we go three and three with a push also. So three, three and one overall. Other than that, nothing too incredible to report. Go ahead and smash the thumbs up button if you want to see our picks every day and subscribe. We got well over 100 new subscribers on our video yesterday, so welcome aboard, everyone. It's going to be a great March. These picks are sponsored by StumpTheSpread.com. Click the link in the description to get over there and join our free email list and check out our top confidence plays on all the major sports. Comment below with your bets today and anything else you want to say about these picks, these videos, or anything you see here. I respond to every single comment, and I'll give you my best advice on your picks to help us all cash some bets. Now let's dive into our first game of the day, Mississippi State versus number five, Tennessee. Mississippi State comes in this game fresh off of a win over LSU. That was one of our wins from Wednesday. That one felt pretty nice. The Bulldogs in general have not been playing all that great. They went on a four game skid before that win over LSU. They were playing against a tough schedule, so we have to give them some credit there. And they did keep some of those games close. They played a very close one against Kentucky. They played a very competitive game against South Carolina, and they kept things close against Texas A&M. The only game that really got out of hand was playing at Auburn. Everybody seems to get wrecked at Auburn, so I'm not going to hold that against them. Josh Hubbard is a very solid leading scorer. He's putting up 16.8 points per game. This team in general has been playing well on the offensive end. It was a little bit of a defensive-minded game against LSU, but they came out on top, so that's encouraging. And they also won that game by 10 points despite shooting the ball pretty poorly from deep. They won only 6 of 21 from long range. That is not what we expect from this team. They can definitely shoot the ball much better than that. Hubbard was the leading scorer by far. He put up 24 points in that game. We did see a little bit of production from their bench, and it was fairly efficient production so that's a good sign in this one if they can go a few more players deep against Tennessee that could definitely help as it's going to be a very tough physical game the volunteers come into this game fresh off of a loss to Kentucky a four-point loss a little bit surprising of a loss honestly we would have thought they would be the better team in that matchup but not quite before that they won a close one at South Carolina earlier this season we saw Tennessee actually lose to Mississippi State 77 to 72 they were playing at Mississippi State this was much earlier in the season so we can't exactly take a ton from that game but it's for sure noteworthy. It shows that Mississippi State shouldn't be afraid in this matchup. They know that they can actually play against this team. Dalton Connect is an absolute monster. He's going to be drafted in the NBA next season. No doubt on that. He's putting up 21 points per game on nearly 50% shooting from the field. Zakai Ziegler is a great point guard. He's putting up 11 points and 6 assists per game. This Tennessee squad is definitely one of the best in the nation. Their offense is good. Their defense is very solid. And they can really rebound the ball. However, as a defensive-minded team, they've been tending to play some very close games. And they've been even playing down to the level of their competition a little bit. Not very long ago, they only won by five points against very lowly Mizzou. Tennessee hasn't really been blowing out opponents lately. They're coming off a loss in this one. Tennessee's only 16-14-1 against the spread overall. With Mississippi State having won in this matchup earlier in this season, we're taking Mississippi State plus 10. That's a lot of points in this one. I think we see a competitive game all the way down to the wire. Do I think Mississippi State comes away with the win? Not necessarily. Tennessee's definitely the better team, but I think this is too many points. Give me the Bulldogs in this one. Next up, we're looking at East Carolina taking on South Florida in the American Conference quarterfinal. East Carolina comes in this game. They did not really have a great season, but they managed to knock off Tulsa their last time out to survive and advance in this American Conference tournament. The Pirates went only 7-11 and in conference play, and they're only 15-17 and overall this season. Things have not really worked out the way they would have hoped. This squad is putting up less than 70 points per game. They're ranked around 330th in the nation in overall offensive production. Their defense is solid, but they kind of played a little bit slower of a pace, so we're not exactly going to overreact to that and they did just give up 79 points to Tulsa so they're not exactly a lockdown defensive team their rebounding is decent but not great their ball movement is not great RJ Felton leads the way in scoring for this team he's pretty solid he's putting up 17 points per game on 44 percent from the field in their win over Tulsa we saw East Carolina dominate the boards they shot the ball very well from three on pretty limited attempts they did struggle a little bit from the free throw line but they got there a lot of times it was kind of a free throw fest though so the refs really took this game over we did see a Sar lead the way scoring with 28 points in this game. That's not a number we expect him to be able to replicate maybe ever again this season. South Florida comes into this game fresh off a loss at Tulsa. Pretty shocking loss, but they already had things locked up in the American Conference, so they really had nothing to play for in that game. The Bulls have been surprisingly one of the better teams overall this season. They've been in the top 25. They're a very solid squad. They've looked better than Florida Atlantic. They've looked better than Charlotte. They've looked better than UAB and Memphis. The American has been a very interesting conference 
conference this year, and South Florida has pretty comfortably came out on top. The Bulls are 19-7-3 against the spread overall this season. They got a very easy win over East Carolina only a few weeks ago, winning by 11 points despite playing at East Carolina. Chris Youngblood is their leading scorer. He's very solid, putting up 15 per game. This team is very good on the boards. They're great defensively, and they can score the ball. They've been absolutely dominant at home this year. I know this isn't a home game, but still. This squad is very, very good since they won so convincingly just a few weeks ago, and they're just flat out the better team. They're looking to win this conference tournament. They're only minus six and a half. Give me South Florida minus six and a half in this one. Next up, we're staying in the American Conference Tournament. We're looking at Wichita State against UAB. The Shockers come into this game. They've been doing some shocking lately. They knocked off Rice, and then they knocked off Memphis. They won 71 to 65 against Memphis. That is a huge win for this team against a much better opponent, although Memphis has been all over the map this season. You never really know what they're going to do on a nightly basis. In that win, we saw scoring from Wichita State up and down the roster. Their bench looked good. Their starters looked good. They had three starters scoring double figures. Beverly put up 17 points. He only went one for three from deep. And just in general, the Shockers only shot 30% from three. Not great. Not terrible, though. They dominated the boards in that game. So one of their better games in recent memory, obviously pulling off a huge upset like that. Wichita actually won in this matchup a few weeks ago because of Colby Rogers going absolutely nuts. We saw him have kind of an off night against Memphis. So maybe he's due for a big game, but also maybe he's just not feeling it right now. It's late in the season. All kinds of weird stuff can be happening. Looking at UAB, they come into this game playing great. They've knocked out Temple and SMU since that absolute meltdown against Memphis. All season long, UAB's had a problem with playing up or down to the level of their competition, but since that loss at Memphis, it seems like there's been a switch that's been flipped. The Blazers have been a great offensive team all season long. Their defense is what really fluctuates. Their rebounding is very good. They don't really have an amazing leading scorer, but Yaxel Lindborg is a very efficient shooter. He's shooting over 50% from the field to lead this team. And Eric Gaines is a great point guard with 12 points per game and five and a half assists. UAB is only minus four and a half in this one. They're in a revenge spot. They're playing their best ball of the season. I think they're out to really prove a point here. UAB is going to have to pretty much win this conference tournament or at least put on a hell of a show if they're going to make the NCAA tournament. They're 17, 12 and one against the spread this season. Wichita State is only 13, 18 and one against the spread overall. Give me UAB minus four and a half. I think they find a way to get a comfortable win in this one. Next up, we're headed to the Big Ten. We're looking at the Ohio State Buckeyes taking on the Illinois Illini. Ohio State comes in this game fresh off another win. They've won five in a row coming into this one. They knocked off Iowa just like we said they would. That was a solid game from the Buckeyes. They played really well. They won 90-78. to This team is hitting something of a stride offensively. They have struggled against solid defensive teams, and that could be kind of what they're running into in this one. Bruce Thornton leads the way in scoring for them, but it was Battle who really went off against Iowa. He scored 23 points in that game. We saw three Buckeyes starters scoring double figures in that one. They played really well, but they're going to have to play insanely well once again in this one. Illinois comes into this game fresh off of a win over Iowa, a very comfortable one. They've won four of their last five overall with the only loss coming against number two Purdue in a very competitive game. The Illini have an amazing leading scorer in Terrence Shannon Jr. He's one of the reasons they're one of the best offensive teams in the nation, scoring around 84 points per game. Illinois won at Ohio State 87 to 75 earlier in the season. That was a while ago, granted, but when you can go into Ohio State and get the win, that's pretty impressive and tells you something about this matchup. Marcus Domask is one of the best point guards in the nation. This team is just great from top to bottom. They're amazing on the boards. I expect them to have a big advantage on the glass in this one. Their defense is very good, and in the game against Michigan State, we saw that Ohio State can have some real problems putting the ball in the basket against stingy defenses. We are going to go with Illinois, minus four and a half in this one. They've got the trends on their side. They've had success in this matchup earlier this season. They're going to find a way to get the job done and win this game by at least five points. This could be a double digit win. Next up, we're headed over to the Big 12. We're looking at one of the marquee games of the day. We've got number 25 Texas Tech against number one Houston. Texas Tech comes into this game fresh off of two very solid wins. They're actually on a four game winning streak overall. Their last two, they beat Baylor by 10 points and then they beat BYU in a blowout. The Red Raiders are hitting their stride at the right point in the season. They ended up finishing things off third overall in the regular season season in the Big 12. Pop Isaacs is a very solid scorer, but he's shooting only 35% from the field overall. That's a little bit concerning. This 
team does play solid defense. Their offensive production is good and has been on a little bit of an uptick lately, but what concerns me in this matchup is their rebounding and their ability to score against Houston, who has been one of the craziest defensive teams in recent memory. The Houston Cougars come into this game fresh off another win. They've been just checking off wins one after another. They completely dominated TCU, winning that game by 15 points, 60 to 45. Very low scoring game. They held down a great offensive team. This squad is allowing only 56.9 points per game overall. That's absolutely insane. They play stifling defense. They've got a whole bunch of crazy athletes they can run out there one after another. They just wear you down. They suffocate you. They do not let you get to the basket. They don't let you get any open looks. They're hounding you every moment you've got the ball. They held TCU to only two of 20 from three point range. That's absolutely bonkers. The Houston bench looked good, not amazing, but definitely serviceable in that win. They just keep playing their hearts out. They're playing some of the best ball in the, in the nation. They're gonna be an extremely tough out in the tournament. When you can defend like that, you don't really have to worry about all the weird variables of shooting in a different gym or playing in a weird arena. You know you're gonna lock down on defense. You know you're not gonna let your opponents score the ball. You can count on some solid guard play from your guards. So you you know your offense is going to put up at least some points. They could be poised for a very, very good outing in the NCAA tournament. Houston won by 23 earlier this season against Texas Tech, so that's an absolute blowout. We see the Cougars are only minus eight in this one. Guys, we cannot pass up on that. Sorry, but there's just no way. Give me Houston minus eight. Give me Houston minus anything 10 or less. I think they get a blowout win. Despite playing against a top 25 team, they're just playing way too well right now. They're healthy and ready to go. Texas Tech's a good team. Don't get me wrong but they are just not on the same level. Next up, we're headed to the ACC tournament. We're going to look at Pittsburgh going up against number four, North Carolina. Pittsburgh comes into this game fresh off of a solid win. They took down Wake Forest. They've won their last four in a row, beating Wake Forest, NC State, Florida State, and Boston College. So they've been playing very solid. They're getting hot at the right time. But how good are the Pittsburgh Panthers really? We see Blake Henson leading the way with 18.8 points per game. He's shooting around 46% from the field. Those are pretty solid numbers. Nothing too bad there. We're not going to say anything negative about him. Carl and Carrington is a very solid guard. He's scoring 14 per game, dishing out four assists. This team can rebound the ball. They play pretty solid defense. Their scoring is pretty good. But when you look at the competition they've faced recently, their last tough opponent was Duke, and that was a very long time ago. They did get blown out by UNC, but that was a really long time ago, very early in the season. They've really had their schedule kind of stack up exactly like you would want it to. And now they're going to have to take on a very tough opponent, though, if they want to survive and advance here in the ACC tournament. North Carolina comes into this game playing some of their best ball this season also. They won in their big rivalry game against Duke. They just knocked off Florida State in an absolute blowout. They won by 25 points. That game was never competitive. UNC has been very good against the spread over the course of the season, going 19-13 against the spread. Pitt was very, has been very good against the spread too, so we're not really taking that trend, those trends into account too much. But still, when you look at North Carolina's numbers, they've got R.J. Davis, one of the best players in the nation. they got Armando Baycott, another amazing player destined for the NBA. Elliot Cadu is putting up four assists per game. This team can really rebound the ball. They're one of the best rebounding teams in the nation. That helps their offensive numbers a lot too. Their defense is very, very good. They already dominated this matchup once this season. I think we're going to see a blowout win from North Carolina. Right now, they're minus seven and a half anything below 10. We like UNC to get the job done here. I think they have their sights on winning this ACC tournament to pair that with their ACC regular season crown. Give me the Tar Heels in this one. Last but not least, we're looking at Oregon going up against number six, Arizona in the Pac-12 tournament. Oregon comes into this game fresh off two pretty solid wins. They knocked off Utah by one point, and then they knocked off UCLA by two points. Now they have to take a huge step up to take on number six, Arizona. Oregon has a Oregon has a competent leading scorer in Jermaine Cosinard, but 15 points per game on 40% shooting, that's not exactly going to carry you against elite teams. Jackson Shellstad is putting up 3 assists and 12 points per game. When you're looking at this roster, they just don't have the same kind of numbers or the same kind of talent that you're going to find on Arizona. This team doesn't rebound the ball particularly well. Their defense isn't great. Sure, their scoring numbers are decent. They had a great home court advantage, but they only went 14 and 18 against the spread overall this season. That's kind of a concerning trend. Like, they just do not do well against the spread at all. This team is going to have to play the absolute 
offensive game of its life. They've lost both games in this matchup and recently lost by 20. Arizona comes into this game playing some of their best ball of the season. They lost in an upset to USC, and then they really got some revenge, winning in the conference tournament by 21 points. They won 70-49 to 49 in a game that was never close. Arizona is averaging almost 90 points per game. They're one of the best offensive teams in the nation. They're one of the best teams in the nation just in general. They're poised for a deep NCAA run as well. If they can find some consistency, they absolutely pound the boards. This is a long, lanky team. Watching them play is like crazy. They're just always so much bigger and longer longer than their opponents. This squad has great ball movement. They're averaging 19 assists per game, which is absolutely incredible for the NCAA. And their defense is pretty stingy as well. Sure, they can have some off nights, but they seem very locked in right now. I think they got embarrassed by that loss against USC, and they're going to be absolutely out for blood against kind of a rival conference opponent. Arizona is 21 and 11 against the spread overall this season. They are minus 10 and a half in this game. I don't care about that, guys. Arizona is going to come out and blow away the Oregon Ducks. Oregon's only good at home. Arizona is good all over the freaking place. They're going to absolutely dominate the boards. This game is not going to be close. Give me Arizona minus 10 and a half in this one. That's all we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck on all your bets today and subscribe if you are new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description. Check out stumptospread.com, and we will see you guys tomorrow for more NCAA basketball action.